Humanities are academic disciplines that study aspects of human society and culture. In the Renaissance, the term contrasted with divinity and referred to what is now called classics, the main area of secular study in universities at the time. Today, the humanities are more frequently contrasted with natural, and sometimes social, sciences as well as professional training. The humanities use methods that are primarily critical, or speculative, and have a significant historical element as distinguished from the mainly empirical approaches of the natural sciences, yet, unlike the sciences, it has no central discipline. The humanities include ancient and modern languages, literature, philosophy, history, human geography, law, politics, religion, and art. Scholars in the humanities are, "...humanity scholars", or humanists. The term, "...humanist", also describes the philosophical position of humanism, which some, "...antihumanist", scholars in the humanities refuse. The Renaissance scholars and artists were also called humanists. Some secondary schools offer humanities classes usually consisting of literature, global studies and art. Human disciplines like history and cultural anthropology study subject matters that the manipulative experimental method does not apply to—and instead mainly use the comparative method and comparative research. Fields Anthropology Anthropology is the holistic, science of humans, a science of the totality of human existence. The discipline deals with the integration of different aspects of the social sciences, humanities and human biology. In the 20th century, academic disciplines have often been institutionally divided into three broad domains. The natural sciences seek to derive general laws through reproducible and verifiable experiments. The humanities generally study local traditions, through their history, literature, music, and arts, with an emphasis on understanding particular individuals, events, or eras. The social sciences have generally attempted to develop scientific methods to understand social phenomena in a generalizable way, though usually with methods distinct from those of the natural sciences. The anthropological social sciences often develop nuanced descriptions rather than the general laws derived in physics or chemistry, or they may explain individual cases through more general principles, as in many fields of psychology. Anthropology like some fields of history, does not easily fit into one of these categories, and different branches of anthropology draw on one or more of these domains. Within the United States, anthropology is divided into four sub-fields, archaeology, physical or biological anthropology, anthropological linguistics, and cultural anthropology. It is an area that is offered at most undergraduate institutions. The word anthropos, anthropos is from the Greek for «human being» or «person». Eric Wolf described sociocultural anthropology as the most scientific of the humanities, and the most humanistic of the sciences". The goal of anthropology is to provide a holistic account of humans and human nature. This means that, though anthropologists generally specialize in only one sub-field, they always keep in mind the biological, linguistic, historic and cultural aspects of any problem. Since anthropology arose as a science in Western societies that were complex and industrial, a major trend within anthropology has been a methodological drive to study peoples in societies with more simple social organization, sometimes called «primitive» in anthropological literature, but without any connotation of «inferior». Today, anthropologists use terms such as «less complex» societies, or refer to specific modes of subsistence or production, such as pastoralist, or forager, or horticulturalist, to discuss humans living in non-industrial, non-Western cultures, such people or folk ethnos remaining of great interest within anthropology. The quest for holism leads most anthropologists to study a people in detail, using biogenetic, archaeological, and linguistic data alongside direct observation of contemporary customs. In the 1990s and 2000s, calls for clarification of what constitutes a culture, of how an observer knows where his or her own culture ends and another begins, and other crucial topics in writing anthropology were heard. It is possible to view all human cultures as part of one large, evolving global culture. 
These dynamic relationships, between what can be observed on the ground, as opposed to what can be observed by compiling many local observations remain fundamental in any kind of anthropology, whether cultural, biological, linguistic or archaeological. Archaeology Archaeology is the study of human activity through the recovery and analysis of material culture. The archaeological record consists of artifacts, architecture, biofacts or ecofacts, and cultural landscapes. Archaeology can be considered both a social science and a branch of the humanities. It has various goals, which range from understanding culture history to reconstructing past lifeways to documenting and explaining changes in human societies through time. Archaeology is thought of as a branch of anthropology in the United States, while in Europe, it is viewed as a discipline in its own right, or grouped under other related disciplines such as history. Classics <laughs> 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 Classics, in the Western academic tradition, refers to the studies of the cultures of classical antiquity, namely ancient Greek and Latin and the ancient Greek and Roman cultures. Classical studies is considered one of the cornerstones of the humanities, however, its popularity declined during the 20th century. Nevertheless, the influence of classical ideas on many humanities disciplines, such as philosophy and literature, remains strong. History History is systematically collected information about the past. When used as the name of a field of study, history refers to the study and interpretation of the record of humans, societies, institutions, and any topic that has changed over time. Traditionally, the study of history has been considered a part of the humanities. In modern academia, history is occasionally classified as a social science. Linguistics and languages While the scientific study of language is known as linguistics and is generally considered a social science, a natural science or a cognitive science, the study of languages is still central to the humanities. A good deal of 20th century and 21st century philosophy has been devoted to the analysis of language and to the question of whether, as Wittgenstein claimed, many of our philosophical confusions derive from the vocabulary we use. Literary theory has explored the rhetorical, associative, and ordering features of language, and historical linguists have studied the development of languages across time. Literature, covering a variety of uses of language including prose forms such as the novel, poetry and drama, also lies at the heart of the modern humanities curriculum. College-level programs in a foreign language usually include study of important works of the literature in that language, as well as the language itself. <laughs> Law and politics In common parlance, law means a rule that unlike a rule of ethics is enforceable through institutions. The study of law crosses the boundaries between the social sciences and humanities, depending on one's view of research into its objectives and effects. Law is not always enforceable, especially in the international relations context. It has been defined as a «system of rules», as an «interpretive concept» to achieve justice, as an «authority» to mediate people's interests, and even as, "...the command of a sovereign, backed by the threat of a sanction". However one likes to think of law, it is a completely central social institution. Legal policy incorporates the practical manifestation of thinking from almost every social science and discipline of the humanities. Laws are politics, because politicians create them. Law is philosophy, because moral and ethical persuasions shape their ideas. Law tells many of history's stories, because statutes, case law and codifications build up over time. And law is economics, because any rule about contract, tort, property law, labor law, company law and many more can have long-lasting effects on how productivity is organized and the distribution of wealth. The noun law derives from the late Old English lagu, meaning something laid down or fixed, and the adjective legal comes from the Latin word lex. Literature 
Literature is a term that does not have a universally accepted definition, but which has variably included all written work, writing that possesses literary merit, and language that foregrounds literariness, as opposed to ordinary language. Etymologically the term derives from Latin literatura, literatura, writing formed with letters, although some definitions include spoken or sung texts. Literature can be classified according to whether it is fiction or non-fiction, and whether it is poetry or prose, it can be further distinguished according to major forms such as the novel, short story or drama, and works are often categorized according to historical periods, or according to their adherence to certain aesthetic features or expectations genre. Philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Etymologically, the «love of wisdom» is generally the study of problems concerning matters such as existence, knowledge, justification, truth, justice, right and wrong, beauty, validity, mind, and language. Philosophy is distinguished from other ways of addressing these issues by its critical, generally systematic approach and its reliance on reasoned argument, rather than experiments experimental philosophy being an exception. Philosophy used to be a very comprehensive term, including what have subsequently become separate disciplines, such as physics, as Immanuel Kant noted. Ancient Greek philosophy was divided into three sciences, physics, ethics, and logic. Today, the main fields of philosophy are logic, ethics, metaphysics, and epistemology. Still, it continues to overlap with other disciplines. The field of semantics, for example, brings philosophy into contact with linguistics. Since the early 20th century, philosophy in English-speaking universities has moved away from the humanities and closer to the formal sciences, becoming much more analytic. Analytic philosophy is marked by emphasis on the use of logic and formal methods of reasoning, conceptual analysis, and the use of symbolic and or mathematical logic, as contrasted with the continental style of philosophy. This method of inquiry is largely indebted to the work of philosophers such as Gottlob Frege, Bertrand Russell, G. E. Moore, and Ludwig Wittgenstein. Religion. New philosophies and religions arose in both East and West, particularly around the 6th century BC. Over time, a great variety of religions developed around the world, with Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, and Buddhism in India, Zoroastrianism in Persia being some of the earliest major faiths. In the East, three schools of thought were to dominate Chinese thinking until the modern day. These were Taoism, Legalism, and Confucianism. The Confucian tradition, which would attain predominance, looked not to the force of law, but to the power and example of tradition for political morality. In the West, the Greek philosophical tradition, represented by the works of Plato and Aristotle, was diffused throughout Europe and the Middle East by the conquests of Alexander of Macedon in the 4th century BC. Abrahamic religions are those religions deriving from a common ancient tradition and traced by their adherence to Abraham circa 1900 BCE, a patriarch whose life is narrated in the Hebrew Bible, Old Testament, where he is described as a prophet Genesis 20 and in the Quran, where he also appears as a prophet. This forms a large group of related largely monotheistic religions, generally held to include Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and comprises over half of the world's religious adherents. Performing arts The performing arts differ from the visual arts insofar as the former uses the artist's own body, face, and presence as a medium, and the latter uses materials such as clay, metal, or paint, which can be molded or transformed to create some art object. Performing arts include acrobatics, busking, comedy, dance, film, magic, music, opera, juggling, marching arts, such as brass bands, and theater. Artists who participate in these arts in front of an audience are called performers, including actors, comedians, dancers, musicians, and singers. Performing arts are also supported by workers in related fields, such as songwriting and stagecraft. Performers often adapt their appearance, such as with costumes and stage makeup, etc. There is also a specialized form of fine art in which the artists perform their work live to an audience. This is called performance art. Most performance art also involves some form of plastic art, perhaps in the creation of props. 
Dance was often referred to as a plastic art during the modern dance era. Topic: <laughs> Musicology Musicology as an academic discipline can take a number of different paths, including historical musicology, ethnomusicology and music theory. Undergraduate music majors generally take courses in all of these areas, while graduate students focus on a particular path. In the liberal arts tradition, musicology is also used to broaden skills of non-musicians by teaching skills such as concentration and listening. Theater Theater or theater Greek theatron Theatron is the branch of the performing arts concerned with acting out stories in front of an audience using combinations of speech gesture music dance sound and spectacle indeed any one or more elements of the other performing arts in addition to the standard narrative dialogue style, theatre takes such forms as opera, ballet, mime, kabuki, classical Indian dance, Chinese opera, mummers' plays, and pantomime. <laughs> dance Dance from Old French dancier, perhaps from Frankish generally refers to human movement either used as a form of expression or presented in a social, spiritual or performance setting. Dance is also used to describe methods of non-verbal communication see body language between humans or animals be dance, mating dance, and motion in inanimate objects the leaves danced in the wind. Choreography is the art of creating dances, and the person who does this is called a choreographer. Definitions of what constitutes dance are dependent on social, cultural, aesthetic, artistic, and moral constraints and range from functional movement such as folk dance to codified, virtuoso techniques such as ballet. Visual arts History of visual arts The great traditions in art have a foundation in the art of one of the ancient civilizations, such as ancient Japan, Greece and Rome, China, India, Greater Nepal, Mesopotamia and Mesoamerica. Ancient Greek art saw a veneration of the human physical form and the development of equivalent skills to show musculature, poise, beauty and anatomically correct proportions. Ancient Roman art depicted gods as idealized humans, shown with characteristic distinguishing features, e.g., Zeus thunderbolt. In Byzantine and Gothic art of the Middle Ages, the dominance of the Church insisted on the expression of biblical and not material truths. The Renaissance saw the return to valuation of the material world, and this shift is reflected in art forms, which show the corporeality of the human body, and the three-dimensional reality of landscape. Eastern art has generally worked in a style akin to Western medieval art, namely a concentration on surface patterning and local color meaning the plain color of an object, such as basic red for a red robe, rather than the modulations of that color brought about by light, shade and reflection. A characteristic of this style is that the local color is often defined by an outline a contemporary equivalent is the cartoon. This is evident in, for example, the art of India, Tibet and Japan. Religious Islamic art forbids iconography, and expresses religious ideas through geometry instead. The physical and rational certainties depicted by the 19th century Enlightenment were shattered not only by new discoveries of relativity by Einstein and of unseen psychology by Freud, but also by unprecedented technological development. Increasing global interaction during this time saw an equivalent influence of other cultures into Western art. Topic: Media types. Topic: <laughs> Drawing. Drawing is a means of making a picture using any of a wide variety of tools and techniques. It generally involves making marks on a surface by applying pressure from a tool or moving a tool across a surface. Common tools are graphite pencils, pen and ink, inked brushes, wax color pencils, crayons, charcoals, pastels, and markers. Digital tools that simulate the effects of these are also used. The main techniques used in drawing are, line drawing, hatching, crosshatching, random hatching, scribbling, stippling, and blending. 
A computer-aided designer who excels in technical drawing is referred to as a draftsman or droughtsman. Topic: <laughs> Painting. Painting taken literally is the practice of applying pigment suspended in a carrier or medium and a binding agent, a glue, to a surface support such as paper, canvas or a wall. However, when used in an artistic sense it means the use of this activity in combination with drawing, composition and other aesthetic considerations in order to manifest the expressive and conceptual intention of the practitioner. Painting is also used to express spiritual motifs and ideas. Sites of this kind of painting range from artwork depicting mythological figures on pottery to the Sistine Chapel to the human body itself. Color is highly subjective, but has observable psychological effects, although these can differ from one culture to the next. Black is associated with mourning in the West, but elsewhere white may be. Some painters, theoreticians, writers and scientists, including Goethe, Kandinsky, Isaac Newton, have written their own color theories. Moreover, the use of language is only a generalization for a color equivalent. The word, red, for example, can cover a wide range of variations on the pure red of the spectrum. There is not a formalized register of different colors in the way that there is agreement on different notes in music, such as C or C sharp in music, although the Pantone system is widely used in the printing and design industry for this purpose. Modern artists have extended the practice of painting considerably to include, for example, collage. This began with cubism and is not painting in strict sense. Some modern painters incorporate different materials such as sand, cement, straw or wood for their texture. Examples of this are the works of Jean Dubuffet or Anselm Kiefer. Modern and contemporary art has moved away from the historic value of craft in favor of concept, this has led some to say that painting, as a serious art form, is dead, although this has not deterred the majority of artists from continuing to practice it either as whole or part of their work. Origin of the term The word, humanities, is derived from the Renaissance Latin expression studia humanitatis, or, study of humanitas, a classical Latin word meaning in addition to, humanity, culture, refinement, education, and, specifically, an education befitting a cultivated man. In its usage in the early 15th century, the Studia Humanitatis was a course of studies that consisted of grammar, poetry, rhetoric, history, and moral philosophy, primarily derived from the study of Latin and Greek classics. The word humanitas also gave rise to the Renaissance Italian neologism humanisti, whence, humanist, Renaissance humanism. History In the West, the study of the humanities can be traced to ancient Greece, as the basis of a broad education for citizens. During Roman times, the concept of the seven liberal arts evolved, involving grammar, rhetoric and logic the trivium, along with arithmetic, geometry, astronomy and music the quadrivium. These subjects formed the bulk of medieval education, with the emphasis being on the humanities as skills or «ways of doing». A major shift occurred with the Renaissance humanism of the 15th century, when the humanities began to be regarded as subjects to study rather than practice, with a corresponding shift away from traditional fields into areas such as literature and history. In the 20th century, this view was in turn challenged by the postmodernist movement, which sought to redefine the humanities in more egalitarian terms suitable for a democratic society since the Greek and Roman societies in which the humanities originated were not at all democratic. This was in keeping with the postmodernists' nuanced view of themselves as the culmination of history. Today Education and employment For many decades, there has been a growing public perception that a humanities education inadequately prepares graduates for employment. The common belief is that graduates from such programs face underemployment and incomes too low for a humanities education to be worth the investment. In fact, humanities graduates find employment in a wide variety of management and professional occupations. 
In Britain, for example, over 11,000 humanities majors found employment in the following occupations Education 25.8%, Management 19.8%. Media, literature, arts, 11.4%; law, 11.3%; finance, 10.4%; civil service, 5.8%; not-for-profit, 5.2%; marketing, 2.3%; medicine, 1.7%; other, 6.4%. Many humanities graduates finish university with no career goals in mind. Consequently, many spend the first few years after graduation deciding what to do next, resulting in lower incomes at the start of their career. Meanwhile, graduates from career oriented programs experience more rapid entry into the labor market. However, usually within five years of graduation, humanities graduates find an occupation or career path that appeals to them. There is empirical evidence that graduates from humanities programs earn less than graduates from other university programs. However, the empirical evidence also shows that humanities graduates still earn notably higher incomes than workers with no post-secondary education, and have job satisfaction levels comparable to their peers from other fields. Humanities graduates also earn more as their careers progress. Ten years after graduation, the income difference between humanities graduates and graduates from other university programs is no longer statistically significant. Humanities graduates can earn even higher incomes if they obtain advanced or professional degrees. In the United States The humanities indicators The Humanities Indicators, unveiled in 2009 by the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, are the first comprehensive compilation of data about the humanities in the United States, providing scholars, policymakers and the public with detailed information on humanities education from primary to higher education, the humanities workforce, humanities funding and research, and public humanities activities. Modeled after the National Science Board Science and Engineering Indicators, the Humanities Indicators are a source of reliable benchmarks to guide analysis of the state of the humanities in the United States. If the STEM crisis is a myth, statements about a crisis in the humanities are also misleading and ignore data of the sort collected by the Humanities Indicators. The Humanities in American Life The 1980 United States Rockefeller Commission on the Humanities described the humanities in its report, The Humanities in American Life Through the humanities we reflect on the fundamental question, what does it mean to be human? The humanities offer clues but never a complete answer. They reveal how people have tried to make moral, spiritual, and intellectual sense of a world where irrationality, despair, loneliness, and death are as conspicuous as birth, friendship, hope, and reason. As a major In 1950, a little over 1% 1 of 22-year-olds in the United States had earned a humanities degree defined as a degree in English, language, history, philosophy. In 2010, this had doubled to about 2.5%. In part, this is because there was an overall rise in the number of Americans who have any kind of college degree. In 1940, 4.6% had a four-year degree. In 2016, 33.4% had one, as a percentage of the type of degrees awarded. However, the humanities seem to be declining. Harvard University provides one example. In 1954, 36% of Harvard undergraduates majored in the humanities, but in 2012, only 20% took that course of study. Professor Benjamin Schmidt of Northeastern University has documented that between 1990 to 2008, degrees in English, history, foreign languages, and philosophy have decreased from 8% to just under 5% of all U.S. college degrees. In liberal arts education The Commission on the Humanities and Social Sciences 2013 report The Heart of the Matter supports the notion of a broad, liberal arts education, 
which includes study in disciplines from the natural sciences to the arts as well as the humanities. Many colleges provide such an education, some require it. The University of Chicago and Columbia University were among the first schools to require an extensive core curriculum in philosophy, literature, and the arts for all students. Other colleges with nationally recognized, mandatory programs in the liberal arts are Fordham University, St. John's College, St. Anselm College and Providence College. Prominent proponents of liberal arts in the United States have included Mortimer J. Adler and E. D. Hirsch, Jr. In the digital age Researchers in the humanities have developed numerous large and small-scale digital corpora, such as digitized collections of historical texts, along with the digital tools and methods to analyze them. Their aim is both to uncover new knowledge about corpora and to visualize research data in new and revealing ways. Much of this activity occurs in a field called the digital humanities. STEM Politicians in the United States currently espouse a need for increased funding of the STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Federal funding represents a much smaller fraction of funding for humanities than other fields such as STEM or medicine. The result was a decline of quality in both college and pre college education in the humanities field. Former four term Louisiana Governor, Edwin Edwards, D., has recently acknowledged the importance of the humanities. In a video address to the academic conference, Revolutions in Eighteenth Century Sociability, Edwards said, Without the humanities to teach us how history has succeeded or failed in directing the fruits of technology and science to the betterment of our tribe of Homo sapiens, without the humanities to teach us how to frame the discussion and to properly debate the uses and the costs of technology, without the humanities to teach us how to safely debate how to create a more just society with our fellow man and woman, technology and science would eventually default to the ownership of—and misuse by—the most influential, the most powerful, the most feared among us. In Asia The value of the humanities debate The contemporary debate in the field of critical university studies centers around the declining value of the humanities. As in America, there is a perceived decline in interest within higher education policy in research that is qualitative and does not produce marketable products. This threat can be seen in a variety of forms across Europe, but much critical attention has been given to the field of research assessment in particular. For example, the UK Research Excellence Framework has been subject to criticism due to its assessment criteria from across the humanities, and indeed, the social sciences. In particular, the notion of «impact» has generated significant debate. Philosophical history Citizenship and self-reflection Since the late 19th century, a central justification for the humanities has been that it aids and encourages self-reflection — a self-reflection that, in turn, helps develop personal consciousness or an active sense of civic duty. Wilhelm Dilthey and Hans Georg Gadamer centered the humanities' attempt to distinguish itself from the natural sciences in humankind's urge to understand its own experiences. This understanding, they claimed, ties like minded people from similar cultural backgrounds together and provides a sense of cultural continuity with the philosophical past. Scholars in the late 20th and early 21st centuries extended that narrative imagination to the ability to understand the records of lived experiences outside of one's own individual social and cultural context. Through that narrative imagination, it is claimed, humanities scholars and students develop a conscience more suited to the multicultural world we live in. That conscience might take the form of a passive one that allows more effective self-reflection or extend into active empathy that facilitates the dispensation of civic duties a responsible world citizen must engage in. There is disagreement, however, on the level of influence humanities study can have on an individual and whether or not the understanding produced in humanistic enterprise can guarantee an identifiable positive effect on people. Um, 
Topic: <laughs> Humanistic theories and practices. There are three major branches of knowledge, natural sciences, social sciences, and the humanities. Technology is the practical extension of the natural sciences, as politics is the extension of the social sciences. Similarly, the humanities have their own practical extension, sometimes called «transformative humanities» transhumanities or «culturonics» Mikhail Epstein's term. Nature – natural sciences, technology, transformation of nature, Society, social sciences, politics, transformation of society, culture, human sciences, culturonics, transformation of culture. Technology, politics, and culturonics are designed to transform what their respective disciplines study nature, society, and culture. The field of transformative humanities includes various practices and technologies, for example, language planning, the construction of new languages, like Esperanto, an invention of new artistic and literary genres and movements in the genre of manifesto, like Romanticism, Symbolism, or Surrealism. Humanistic invention in the sphere of culture, as a practice complementary to scholarship, is an important aspect of the humanities. Truth and meaning The divide between humanistic study and natural sciences informs arguments of meaning in humanities as well. What distinguishes the humanities from the natural sciences is not a certain subject matter, but rather the mode of approach to any question. Humanities focuses on understanding meaning, purpose, and goals and furthers the appreciation of singular historical and social phenomena an interpretive method of finding truth", rather than explaining the causality of events or uncovering the truth of the natural world. Apart from its societal application, narrative imagination is an important tool in the production of understood meaning in history, culture and literature. Imagination, as part of the tool kit of artists or scholars, helps create meaning that invokes a response from an audience. Since a humanities scholar is always within the nexus of lived experiences, no absolute. Knowledge is theoretically possible, knowledge is instead a ceaseless procedure of inventing and reinventing the context a text is read in. Poststructuralism has problematized an approach to the humanistic study based on questions of meaning, intentionality, and authorship. In the wake of the death of the author proclaimed by Roland Barthes, various theoretical currents such as deconstruction and discourse analysis seek to expose the ideologies and rhetoric operative in producing both the purportedly meaningful objects and the hermeneutic subjects of humanistic study. This exposure has opened up the interpretive structures of the humanities to criticism humanities scholarship as unscientific and therefore unfit for inclusion in modern university curricula because of the very nature of its changing contextual meaning. <laughs> Pleasure, the pursuit of knowledge and scholarship Some, like Stanley Fish, have claimed that the humanities can defend themselves best by refusing to make any claims of utility. Fish may well be thinking primarily of literary study, rather than history and philosophy. Any attempt to justify the humanities in terms of outside benefits such as social usefulness, say increased productivity, or in terms of ennobling effects on the individual, such as greater wisdom or diminished prejudice, is ungrounded, according to Fish, and simply places impossible demands on the relevant academic departments. Furthermore, critical thinking, while arguably a result of humanistic training, can be acquired in other contexts. And the humanities do not even provide any more the kind of social cachet what sociologists sometimes call cultural capital that was helpful to succeed in Western society before the age of mass education following World War II. Instead, scholars like Fish suggest that the humanities offer a unique kind of pleasure, a pleasure based on the common pursuit of knowledge even if it is only disciplinary knowledge. Such pleasure contrasts with the increasing privatization of leisure and instant gratification characteristic of Western culture, it thus meets Jürgen Habermas' requirements for the disregard of social status and rational problematization of previously unquestioned areas necessary for an endeavor which takes place in the bourgeois public sphere. 
In this argument, then, only the academic pursuit of pleasure can provide a link between the private and the public realm in modern Western consumer society and strengthen that public sphere that, according to many theorists, is the foundation for modern democracy. Others, like Mark Bauerlein, argue that professors in the humanities have increasingly abandoned proven methods of epistemology I care only about the quality of your arguments, not your conclusions, in favor of indoctrination I care only about your conclusions, not the quality of your arguments. The result is that professors and their students adhere rigidly to a limited set of viewpoints, and have little interest in, or understanding of, opposing viewpoints. Once they obtain this intellectual self-satisfaction, persistent lapses in learning, research, and evaluation are common. Romanticization and rejection Implicit in many of these arguments supporting the humanities are the makings of arguments against public support of the humanities. Joseph Carroll asserts that we live in a changing world, a world where «cultural capital» is replaced with scientific literacy, and in which the romantic notion of a Renaissance humanities scholar is obsolete. Such arguments appeal to judgments and anxieties about the essential uselessness of the humanities, especially in an age when it is seemingly vitally important for scholars of literature, history and the arts to engage in «collaborative work with experimental scientists or even simply to make» intelligent use of the findings from empirical science. See also Outline of the Humanities Humanities Topics Great Books Great Books Programs in Canada Liberal Arts Social Sciences Human Science The Two Cultures List of Academic Disciplines Public Humanities Periodic Table of Human Sciences In Tinbergen's Four Questions Environmental Humanities <laughs>